What you may or may not know is that I got to voice a character on a brand new show on Disney Junior. And the show is called Mira, the Royal Detective. And it's set in India. It's an all sort of Indian American, South Asian American cast. And, uh, and so um, I got to voice a character on that. And the episode that my character in is in um, sorry, I'm so excited. I can't even speak English right now. <laughs> I am, um, my character's name is Chef Shoba. And the episode that I'm in is on this coming Friday. Yeah, April 24th. So that's Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, this is not, let's see. I'm going to try one more time to bring in. So who we're waiting for is, oh, Monroe Ever 5. I'm so glad that your son loves the show. Oh, that makes me so happy. Okay, so I'm trying to bring in the EP of that show. So let's wait for him to come in. And so if you have any questions about the show, we did take some notes of some of the things that you guys sent in. Hey, Sasha. Hi, Artie, how are you? Good. Well, everybody, please say hello. Send um, hearts and whatever else you can send. <laughs> um, this is Sasha Palladino. He is the executive producer of Mira, Royal Detective on Disney Junior. Yep. And, uh, what that means is he's like the big boss. I think a lot of people, yeah, they don't know what EP means. So yeah, so you're, you're in charge, right? That's right, yeah, but I can't do it alone. It's, um, it's a true collaboration. Yes, yes, you have a great team, including my friend Geetika, so yes. very excited. Um, so for people that haven't watched it yet, can you sort of tell people what Mirror Royal Detective is all about and why of it's a historic show? Sure. So uh, Mirror Royal Detective is an animated series about a young girl in a land inspired by India. Um, and she's a detective. She's very curious. She's very thoughtful. She's a great friend. Um, and she, she looks at the world in a really unique way. And that's why the queen of this kingdom of Jalpur has chosen her to be the royal detective. And in the show, we follow her adventures um, as she solves cases, not only for the royals, but also for the people in town. And so we, we, it, the show's called Mirror Royal Detective, but we really think of her as the people's detective yeah. um, because she helps everyone. And the show is, um, celebrates South Asian culture, South Asian cuisine, which is why it was such an honor and a joy to have you on the show, Artie. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we love to um, explore South Asian culture from every angle that we can. Um, and uh, the show hopefully um, is a joyful, uh, celebration. That's one of our biggest goals. And we're really inspired by Bollywood musicals. Yeah. So uh, every episode has a big musical number. Um, and that hopefully helps to bring the joy. Yeah, it is. It's a very joyful show. It's brightly colored. There's beautiful, um, there's just beautiful design to the show. I don't think you can do a South Asian show without a lot of beautiful, like, um, costumes and buildings and everything is just sort of intricate and pretty. Um, and so for kids, especially, it's really eye catching. Why, what drew you to the show in the first place? Why did you decide to work on the show? So the show had been in development at Disney, an amazing writer, Becca Topol, who you know, had been developing the show. Um, and uh, I was finishing up a show that I had created called Miles from Tomorrowland, which is about a family in outer space. They also ate very interesting foods, but not ones from this planet. And um, and and I, uh, Disney asked if I'd be interested. And I, I just love doing a deep dive into a culture that's not my own. I find it fascinating. I saw in your Wait, um, in, in I your see you're not South Asian. <laughs> um, that is true. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, I saw in your, your Instagram profile that you're a, a multiculturalism junkie, um, which I think I would put that label on myself as well. I just love exploring new cultures. Um, and since what I do is make television for kids, I love figuring out ways to, to introduce kids to new cultures. Um, and so that last show, even though it was about outer space, it was sort of a stand in for this family exploring different cultures. They're exploring different planets, but they were really exploring different cultures. That was the metaphor. Um, and I've worked on projects about 
Chinese culture. I did a documentary in Africa. So I just love sort of exploring deeply a new culture. Um, so when they asked me to work on the show as the showrunner, executive producer, I jumped at the chance. I was already fascinated with Indian culture. And um, it seemed like a, a great concept and a great way to introduce kids to this amazing culture and also a great excuse to eat a lot more Indian food, which turned <laughs> out to be um, definitely true. Yeah. Are you an Indian food fan? Yes, a huge fan. Um, so Miles from Tomorrowland was um, the anime, a lot of animation is done in India. And so the animation of my previous show, Miles from Tomorrowland was done in India. So I, w I had gone to India once and um, just had an incredible, mind blowing, eye opening, taste bud popping experience. And, um, and then I was able, lucky enough to go again with Vermeera. So I've been twice now and yeah, um, I'm a huge Indian food fan, and I'm a, and that was why we were so excited to include you on the show, Artie. Yeah. Um, Gitika, one of our writers, Gitika was Artie, and uh, and Artie are friends, and um, and Gitika was like, we gotta find a way to get to get Artie on the show, and we all agreed, we were all fans, and um, just excited that you would voice a character. So that, as as you said, um, that episode premieres this Friday on mm -hmm. Disney Channel, I think at 11 a.m. I am so excited. Well, because I. I saw, and we'll, I'll put it up, we'll put it up soon, guys, um, what my character, Shaf Shoba, um, looks like. And she has a little nose ring, too, which was very exciting for me. Yes, we, we don't always base our, our designs on, on the voice actors, but in this case, we felt like you deserve the tribute and the honor of having an animated character. Um, so we believe that, yes, you are Shaf Shoba. Thank you. Well, I believe I'm Chef Shoba too. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was super fun to do it because, it, you know, doing this career has allowed me to do a lot of really cool things to travel and have really cool experiences, but never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would be able to voice a character on an animated show. Like, I was like, that's something my husband's going to do because he's the actor, you know? So what um, was that like for you? What was the experience like for you of recording? Because we didn't even, I mean, I think we might have had, I don't even think we had a design when you came in. We just told no. you what, we, you know, you saw the script and you knew what the show was and what the general yeah. look was, but what, how it was, was it? I mean, it was a little nerve wracking at first because it's a huge, it's like, a, you know, when you watch those music documentaries and people are in studios with tons of mics and stuff like that. It was one of those rooms, but then I was standing in it all by myself. <laughs> And um, and then it was just me and, you know, you have these headphones on and it, you just hear yourself. So um, it but you were amazing. natural. You were great. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I will say that I started to understand why some of my friends who do voiceover um, do classes for people because it is a skill. And I did find that my voice got tired after a little while. I was like, oh my gosh, like I can feel it drying up in there. You know what I mean? And I was like, Ahem, can I have some tea with honey? You know, um, <laughs> that's, that's what they do though. That's what all the voice actors do. Tea with honey. That's the trick that yeah. and, and green apples. Um, when they get too like smacky lip smacky, they, they take a bite of a green apple and it helps dry up. That's yeah. There's all these little tricks. I think we forgot to tell you the apple one. I apologize, but <laughs> okay. um, next time. It's okay. Well, I used to work in radio, so we used to call that um, NPR mouth. When you get <laughs> Not, no dissing NPR. But um, yeah, so, you know, one of the comments that I just saw was someone said that they love the show because every episode has a really cool message behind it. Is that something that you guys um, were very specific about? Definitely. Yeah. So in addition to celebrating South Asian culture, we wanted to um, create stories that would be relatable to everyone. Um, just stories about being a kid, what it means to be a kid, um, and hopefully what it means to do the right thing. You know, Mira is someone who kind of leads by example. She's yeah. a good person. She's got a good heart. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, we don't think we don't want the show to feel heavy, like there's a message, there's a lesson that's right. banging you over the head. But I right. do hope that there's a, a takeaway um, that really feels realistic and useful, you know, whether it's like looking out for your friends, something simple, right. something yeah. that hopefully kids can relate to their own lives. So I'm really, really excited that um, that's coming across. That's yeah, great. yeah, it's, it's awesome. I've had so many people write to me and say that their kids are really into the show. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. So I don't know if you've heard that, but I'm telling you, people are writing and say they love the show. So. That's so great to hear. Thank yeah. you for telling me. Yeah, we've gotten some really great feedback. The show's only been on for about a month 
Um, but we've already gotten some great feedback. Just just going through Twitter and seeing people. Uh, I think the the thing that we love seeing the most is when um, South Asian moms write that you know they've never they wish they had something like this when they were kids, and yeah. and it's just so meaningful to them to and for their kids to see their culture reflected on screen in a way that they haven't before. And that yeah. I, mean, I definitely felt like this was a watershed moment mm. for our community because. There's been a slow trickle of seeing our faces on TV, you know, whether it was like Mindy Kaling or, you know, Hasan Minaj and people like that, Aziz Ansari, seeing those people. But um, it's a big deal when there's a whole show dedicated to our community. Um, and, um, and for me, like when I was growing up, um, that I didn't have that, you know, there were no shows with, with my people on them, except for Bollywood mo movies. Um, and so I just grew up thinking that our people are very dramatic and <laughs> always ready to dance and say, <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong with me? Um, but um, it didn't, it didn't so much bother me that there wasn't a cartoon on that, you know, reflected who I was, but because I didn't know to be upset about that. Does that make mm. sense? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, just, I'm really curious to see what it does for my girls, who are half Indian, half American. Um, How old are they? They're six and four, so they're the perfect. Oh, perfect. Group. Yeah. Um, to see what it does for them, to see like, oh, look, you know, it's normalized. We're normalized people. And, yeah. And we're just like, and that's kind of, I assume, one of the things that you try to do with a show like this is like, yes, there are things that set us apart that are interesting, like the food we eat, the music that we listen to, and how we spend our days maybe, but um, but the things that are important to us are the same as the things that are important to you, being, yes. moral, being kind, uh, being curious, solving mysteries, you know, all these things are just intrinsic to being a human being. Yeah, completely. That's probably our, I'd say our biggest goal. You know, it's amazing that the South Asian community has embraced the show so far, um, but, it's also our hope that the show is just everyone loves it you know like we want we want it to feel like these stories you know even if you are not aware of what south asian culture is these stories yeah. hopefully are relatable to all kids and um and then the the culture comes through in the texture there are some stories about the holidays specific things that relate yeah. to the culture but you know a lot of these stories it could happen anywhere. They're just kids. They're having fun. They're they're going on adventures. They're solving mysteries. That could happen in any culture. Um, yeah. And I hope that kids take that away as this is just another group of kids and they might look a little different than me, but they act just like me. And, yeah. you know, we, and, and, and to me, it's, it's sort of that duality of celebrating both what makes us similar and what makes us different. Yes. I think that, you know, they're both important and they're both great. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the things when, um, I swear that this will make sense in a second, but my husband and I were long distance for four or five years. And I remember saying to him, you know, the thing that I miss the most is that when I'm in a room by myself and I get up off the couch and I walk to the kitchen, no one knows I've moved. And he was like, oh, you just want someone to acknowledge you, that you exist. And so for me, the thing about Disney doing the show, Disney Junior doing the show, is that it makes us feel seen. You know what I mean? It makes us feel acknowledged. And I, I think that that's really powerful for any human being, but especially for a group, and especially for a minority group in this massive, massive country um, that has become home, um, to be seen and to be acknowledged, very, very powerful. And so I'm really excited to see what it does for the children, you know, to be seen. Because I think when you're seen, then you feel confident enough to share more of yourself and then get involved and get engaged your community and show up, you know what I mean? So I'm re I, th I think that there's a huge sort of social benefit to a show like this that I, I don't think if that it's apparent at first, once you think about it a little longer, like it gets me a little choked up, honestly. So thank you for doing oh, it. Oh, thank you for saying that. It means so much to us already. And, um, and it's funny, we, we've had a number of people actually cry um, about this show, like just talking about it, thinking about it. Um, and, you know, when we're in the trenches, just figuring out stories, figuring out what is the show going to look like, working with our composers, like there's so many, there's a million details. Um, and it's easy to sort of forget about that impact. Um, so thank you for saying it. And um, we, we love it when people cry. I mean, you know, out of, 
happiness. <laughs> we don't want to make them sad, but um, but it's it, it's just it shows how how powerful it is, and it's actually a great reminder to all of us who make the show what huge right. responsibility we have and, and and what a privilege it is, you know. Yeah, that is very true. Okay, let's talk about something a little lighter hearted. <laughs> okay, uh, so you I might cry though if we talk about certain foods, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so you said that you loved Indian food. Yes. And Indian food makes an appearance in the, obviously in my episode, because I'm, I'm a judge on a cooking competition show and That's something right. happens and Mira has to help solve the, the And she has to save the cooking contest. Yes. She does have to save the cooking contest. Um, what, what's one of your favorite Indian dishes? Um, what, one of my favorites is Hyderabadi biryani. So um, that is so specific. <laughs> Well, I told you I like doing deep dives into cultures, right? So, yeah. so I, um, when I first, my first trip to India, uh, I, we were in Hyderabad because that's where the animation studio I was working with is. And, um, and so I, I read a lot about the culture getting ready. Um, and I, and I learned that biryani is very, is a very important dish there. Yeah. And there's a unique, a unique flavor to it in Hyderabad. And I had had biryani before here in the U.S. at Indian restaurants and it just, it was never that special like it was like yeah it's rice and it's what well, you know and there's stuff in it but yeah. I, I like I think I had it once and then I never ordered it again because it was like mm -hmm. it's just it's not that exciting but um I guess some of our the people we were working with said you got to try it you got to try it so we went to this biryani restaurant and it just was the most amazing thing um <laughs> because the the way that the smell when it so it's served in those pots and when the smell hits you it's so overwhelming yeah. and it's so it's like you're in this like haze of just yeah. deliciousness and then the way that the rice the, the the soaks up the flavor i guess what i learned is that it 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 cooks for a really long time, like overnight or maybe 24 hours. I'm not sure. Really? The place I was, yeah. It's it, and, and that's why the rice soaks up so much flavor. Um, but it was, uh, it was amazing. Anyway, so there's one restaurant in LA I found that has Hyderabadi biryani. Really? Um, yeah, and so we actually ordered it for the crew um, one day just so everyone could taste it. And then when, when I was in Bangalore last year, um, I noticed there were all these Hyderabad biryani restaurants. So I realized that in India, it's a thing. Like it's, okay. so I guess I'm not the only one, but yeah. it's so, do you have any tips for how to get that well, flavor? Um, so for people who don't know, cause someone was asking biryani is, um, it is sort of a, it is a, it's the dish you pull out when you really want to impress somebody. Um, so it's like birthdays, weddings, um, hi, I'm trying to marry your son, like things like, <laughs> things like that. Um, so it's, it's basically, it's usually a meat of some kind that's cooked in a, it's a curry, like a dry curry. And then the, that is layered between layers of rice. And there's usually also saffron in there. Sometimes they'll put potatoes or eggs. There's lots of different variations, but the idea is you put it in layers and you trap all the aroma and the steam in there by um, there's a couple of different ways you can do foil and a very heavy lid or you could do um, dum biryani which is where you put the lid on and you actually make a dough and you put that around the edge of the contained vessel and then let it cook slow and slow so nothing escapes which is why what you uh, when they open it you're like whoa because it's all of that aroma hitting you at one time and it is it is a rush it's a rush it's amazing so um i would say um one i don't think you need to cook it overnight they might do it if they do it over coals maybe that's why mm. they do it overnight mm. you can do it in your oven um, but one thing I found was to, um, you have to par cook the rice. Oh. And the easiest way to do that is actually to boil the rice like pasta. Uh, okay, that's a great tip. Yeah, so, um, and that's actually back home, that's how my mom makes rice. She doesn't measure it, she just fills a huge pot with water, lets it boil, adds the rice to it, and cooks it for like, eight minutes and then he drains the whole thing and lets it steam and it's done. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, great. That's the that's the way, buddy. That's <laughs> the way. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well now I have to try it. I haven't made it because I haven't wanted to disappoint myself, but now yeah. with your tips, um maybe I can bring myself to tears. But <laughs> 
can't wait. I can't wait. Um, all right, I'm just going to double check. Um, what are you excited for people to learn after they watch the show? Oh, um, that's a great question. Well, for people who don't know much about South Asian culture, I'm excited for them to learn kind of, you know, the aspects that we're able to to show, the music, the, the colors, the clothing, the food, um, but also to be inspired to learn more because it's just a TV show. There's only so much we can show and there's nothing like right. experiencing the culture for yourself. Um, so hopefully for kids and parents who who haven't experienced much of South Asian culture, that's what they'll take from it. And then for families who are of South Asian descent, um, I just hope they'll see themselves. I hope they'll see, um, you know, their their specific traditions, their um, their little phrases. We try to incorporate a little mm -hmm. bit of Hindi into the show. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just want them to recognize themselves and like you said, to be seen. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Sasha. I thank you, Artie. To watch it on Friday, guys. It's The show is called Mira, Royal Detective. It's on Disney Junior and my episode where I voice the character of Chef Shoba as this Friday. Yes. It's going to be awesome. And thank you so much for being on the show, Artie. It's, yeah. uh, it, was, it was really an honor to have you, and we're so excited. It was um, an easy yes, Sasha. It was an easy yes. <laughs> okay, good. And yeah, I want to hear what you think afterwards. We're very yeah, excited to hear what you think. Yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Great to see you. Great to see you. Take care. Bye.